Yes, Jamaica's top-ranked tennis player, in fact, the number one-ranked Caribbean player in the world at the moment, Blaise Bicknell, is continuing to bask in the glory of his first International Tennis Federation Pro Circuit title. Earlier today, Ricardo and Mariah caught up with Bicknell ahead of his ATP Challenger first-round contest. Blaise Bicknell comes up now. Ran it from a set down to defeat American James Tracy in the final of the M25 Laval men's tournament in Canada. The 21 year old who secured a bronze medal for Jamaica at the recent CSE Games in El Salvador is currently taking part at an ATP Challenger event also in Canada. Blaze joins us via Zoom. Blaze, it's a pleasure to have you on the Sportsmax Zone. First of all, how are you doing? And I ask that against the background of the amount of tennis you have. Have been playing in recent weeks from the CAC games where on some days you had multiple matches in a day um, then to um, ITF Futures then to an ATP Challenger event and considering you were playing a lot of tennis before the CAC games as well mentally and physically how are you? Yeah right obviously it's very taxing on the body um, and the mind but I've done a good job of going to the physio every day and getting that and getting in the gym, keeping up my strength. And yeah, just playing the best tennis I've played right now. So just keeping keeping going hot and continuing to play well. So looking forward to today again. Is it usual um, for a player at your level um, the amount of tennis you have been playing in, in recent weeks? Um, no, I don't think for anyone it's normal, but it's what happens when you're winning and you're going deep every week, which is a good thing. But as long as I'm taking care of my body, I'm not risking any injury, and it's, it's fine to do. So. Yeah, let's talk about Sunday. Um, well, 24 hours Sunday into Monday, a tremendous 24 hours for you. First of all, you won your first pro-level um, tournament in Laval, Canada. Then you had, what, a bus drive um, about two hours away, and you were in qualifying for a challenger event just talk to me about um that 24 hour period yeah well obviously i was exhausted after the finals and i got it done but i just had no pressure on myself i just went out and just played freely I'd, and i beat a guy about 300 in the world so that was obviously good for me at what stage did you know that you would have to um, you know, complete these heroics, um, move from um, Laval to get to Grand B to be able to play um, the first round of qualifying in the Challenger event on the same day and then return on Monday morning to play the second round of qualifying? Yeah, well, I found out after I won my semifinals and I said, okay, well, this is a decision I have to make. Am I going to pull out of the tournament? And I just, I don't like to give up. So I said, I'm definitely going to give it my best shot and uh, it worked out worked out well and yeah and explain to us why the Grand B tournament especially was so important well it's um the level up from the the futures that I won so I lost in two futures no one futures earlier in the year and obviously that didn't feel good and I, I told myself I went to CAC games and I felt winning I got the bronze medal and I was like hungry for that feeling again so when I went to Montreal right after, I said I wanted to win. So it felt good to get the job done there. Hey, and Blaze, what's the biggest takeaway for you from this victory? What does it mean to you personally? Well, for my confidence and for my ranking, prize money, all that, it just feels great. I've been working hard and getting the results now after playing so much matches and winning. So I just have to keep, keep the streak going. Yeah, and talk to me about the team behind you, coach, of course, you know, the backroom staff, everybody that has been working with you and not giving up to ensure that you achieve all the success that you want. Yeah, my coach is with me. I also have my trainer. He's not with me here, but he comes to some Chris Paul. He um, talks to him every day and he get all my recovery done. Takes a lot, takes like two hours out of the recovery every day make sure I'm ready to go for the next day again and the strength and all that to keep up and then coach me and I have set out a schedule so it's, it's been working out well. And you know the newly crowned Wimbledon men's single champion he's 20 Carlos Alcaraz how does that make you feel because I mean it 
to me, it opens up a new pathway. It shows you how the youngsters could step up. You're doing something very similar. Does it give you a sort of motivation, inspiration, maybe? Yeah, he's unbelievable. The generational talent, but see him at that age motivates me to like get where I want to sooner. I'm 21, so I want to get by this time next year to be in Wimbledon, hopefully, if mm -hmm. I keep on the right track. Yeah, the, I was going to get to that place. Clearly, the ultimate target is to be able to play in Grand Slam tournaments. You are now at a career high, 724 in the world. I'm thinking to myself that if you want to be around Grand Slam territory, you're looking at top 200, top 150. What's the pathway um, for you to get there? And, and, and you started speaking to it just now. How soon do you see yourself getting into those positions to be able to vie for Grand Slam tennis spots? Well, I won a tournament last week and I qualified this week. So in the, li in the live rankings, I'm up to about 550. So, yeah, I have to be in the top 240 in the world to get into the Grand Slam. So I think if I just keep getting results like this consistently and just keep on pushing, then I'll, I'll get there. As you pointed out, um, the futures level, um, a level below the tournament you are playing this week, which is the ATP Challenger level, um, can you describe for us the difference in quality if any at all, uh, moving up from the Futures to the Challengers? Yeah, well, the players here are just much more professional. You have guys here, like number one seed, for example, Kakinakis won Australian Open last year, doubles with Nick Curious, and just surrounded by these people. But you just see them in the gym, warming up for about 30 minutes before, and the, top, the um, skill isn't much different, but... They do things better, better serve, better back and better forehand, just slightly better. So, yeah. You know, it was impressive when we saw you play in Jamaica at the Davis Cup earlier this year. Um, and I was able to watch a, a few of your matches on the Future Store in recent weeks as well. Um, and clearly there are a lot of improvements. Can you talk us through the areas that you have been improving that have led to the type of results that we have been seeing in recent weeks, if not recent months? Yeah, in Davis Cup, my serve was off. I, I honestly didn't play, my, like I'm playing much better now than I was then. I just worked a lot with my coach, for example, and my toss in my serve is no longer a problem. My backhand, I don't really have as, have as much weaknesses where people would target. So that's a big advantage, and I still have a, my forehand as a weapon. So people have struggled to, to find something to attack against me, which has helped me. Blaze, how important do you think your success is for the development of tennis in Jamaica? A lot of youngsters, they look up to you. They see you as a motivation. How, how important is it to you and how seriously do you take the fact that you're a role model here for the youngsters? Yeah, of course. Well, I have to be a good example and I try my best to be, obviously. But, um, yeah, tennis has obviously grown a lot in Jamaica recently. Um, the Federation has done a good job of like marketing tennis and putting on many amateur events and a, a, lot, a lot of people around tennis in Jamaica are excited now. So I guess with the Davis Cup team success and other, other things, it gets people motivated to, the kids especially, to get to the level where I want to be. Or, yeah. yeah, and on that note as well, Blaze, let's take track and field as an example. Um, many years ago, there were um, some men who decided that they could train world-class track and field athletes in Jamaica, and we've seen tremendous successes coming out of that. Um, similar to you, where you have had a lot of your development in Jamaica, but I note importantly that currently you are coached by a Jamaican. You spoke about your fitness trainer, who is also Jamaican. How important is that local aspect in your development? Yeah, it's great because uh, um, it just shows my coach was on tour for 15 years before a guy that got to doubles top five in the world. So he has that experience of being on the ATP tour and coaching guys of that level. And Chris Paul is worked for, was a coach, has a great resume too. So he's one, I think one of the best trainers in the business. 
So, and they're Jamaican, which is just goes to show you that like we have everything that we need. I don't have as much players to practice with in Jamaica, which is the only issue, but I, it's fine for a short period of time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what does the remainder of 2023 um, look like for you? It's, it, it has already been a stunning year. Um, I know Davis Cup would also be on the agenda as well with a group two tie against Lebanon. Talk to us about what the remainder of 2023 looks like for Blaze. Yeah, well, the first five months, I was finishing my degree and my last season of NCAA Division One College Tennis at University of Tennessee. So I just finished that and I just turned pro. So I've just been playing straight out through since then. And from leading up to Davis Cup, I will probably go to some tournaments together with like the rest of the team and Coach Mel and, and Chris Paul. Yeah. And then we have Davis Cup in Lebanon mid-September. And then we have the Pan American Games in October. But throughout that period, I'll also be playing like, hopefully now with my new ranking, ATP Challenger events, majority. And of course, some still some futures until I get to like top 400s, 300s. So. Yeah. And I note as well that you've been able to play a few doubles events with uh, John Chin, who is also part of the Davis Cup setup, another youngster, just, what, 18 years old. Um, yeah, what's that been like, and how important has that been um, for both of you, I think, and for um, the country as you look ahead to Davis Cup? Yeah, well, he, John Chin's a lefty, and he has a very good lefty serve, so people don't like that. So when I mind that with my serve, we don't often get broken. And we just we made the finals of a tournament the other day, which was which was big for us and our confidence. We did well in CSC game doubles as well. So, yeah, it's good for good for the whole team leading up to Davis Cup. Yeah, let's talk about your your pathway a, a, a little bit, um, Blaze. I mean, you're not in the majors yet, but as you pointed out, based on how you've been going, um, just outside the top 500 now in the live ranking so we'll see that reflected when the rankings come out next monday i think it is um give us an idea of what it has taken for you to get to this stage because it's not easy it's so difficult to break through um in in this sport of a tennis where you have to play and you have to play a lot to be able to climb the rankings and get into a position where you can even start thinking about playing at the majors. Right, so it's you have to play like most players play up to 30 weeks, sometimes more per year. Especially at this, where I'm at, I have to get to the top 100, I have to play a lot, 30, 30 weeks a year. So um, for the next year, I'll just be basing in Miami, I think I'm traveling and, and playing challenger events and hopefully winning a couple, and that will get my ranking up. Yeah. And in terms of even going before that um, and, and getting to this stage that you are at now, in terms of the developmental pathway, at what stage would you say that a determination was made that, yes, we're going to be going for this? Um, this is not going to be just another player who probably goes into the NCAA system and, and that's it. But we're going to make a real run at becoming a professional tennis player. Yeah, well, it was always, it was always my plan to be a professional tennis player, but um, I had to get my degree. And I won the NCAAs in 2021, and I was considering turning pro then, but I decided to go back to, back to school and and played the last two years and still play some pro tournaments just to keep our ranking. But I decided that this summer I'm going to go all out and with the support of my family and everyone. And they supported me and yeah. You mentioned going back to school a couple of times and every time I interview an athlete in any sport, I always want to find out, you know, Based on the sport itself, Blaze, do you feel like um, it is a path that you can pursue and it will help you in the manner, and I'm talking about financially, like it can sustain you if you were to just focus on tennis alone? Yeah, well, you have to, tennis is a sport where you have to get results or else you're not going to get paid. So um, if you're losing early each week, you're probably be losing money on the tour because 
the only way to make money in this sport is to be in well real money I'm talking is to be in the in the Grand Slams top 200 in the world so yeah. have to get there before you can really start profiting yeah. but you can profit if you don't go with a coach or not but I'm doing it the right way and to get to where I want yeah we're well, looking forward to see you in the Grand Slam making that big money Ricardo <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure Blaise it's been a, a pleasure speaking with you and we wish you all the very best this week at the ATP Challenger event in Canada we look forward to you playing more Challenger events and we can't wait until we see you on the ATP tour playing the 500s and the 1000s and most yeah. importantly competing at the Grand Slams. Thank you very much Blaise Bicken and all the best going forward. Yeah, so Blaze was only available to do that interview earlier on today because he's playing this Challenger tournament in Canada and has a game in an hour or two from now. So I guess Mara and uh, Ricardo, he's probably warming, warming up at the moment, getting ready for this assignment in Granby. Yeah, he spoke about the professional players yes. um, at these tournaments spending half an hour in the gym before um, <laughs> they play their matches. So yes. if he's following suit, he's uh, probably having a little gym session mm. right now mm. um, before his big first round encounter. And we wish him all the very best. Do you do that before your big matches? Yes. So you go to the gym and then play? Yes, I find that it helps actually, but it's all about what you do in the gym when you do go. So um, what do you do? But it's all about firing the legs up. So what do you do when you go? Fire the legs up. <laughs> I, I find I find Mariah very probing, Ricardo. What what have you no. done to her? No, he didn't do anything. <laughs> Throughout the entire tennis interview, yeah. I was wondering if he had a second shot at it. Okay. So I was trying to find out from Blaze to help him. Oh. Yeah. Some pointers. Yeah. Okay. I He's think. on the injured list at the moment, so there's there's there isn't much that he can get right now from i was Blaise. even thinking i could get on blaze's good book so the coach and staff and stuff could give ricardo the opportunity to come train with them i was looking out for you i was afraid it would descend to this i think it's break time man <laughs> <laughs>